Welcome to the Moms I Know with Sheila Walsh Denson and Maria Anderson Farnham. Two moms on a mission to reclaim childhood and take you from surviving to thriving on your parenting journey. To be in your children's memories tomorrow, you have to be in their lives today. I'm Barbara Johnson. Hi, this is Sheila. And this is Maria. And we want to welcome you to The Moms, Moms I, I know. know. What a fun quote to think about. And as we are um, being in our children's lives today, our topic is looking at this idea of how we set boundaries with our children for our children uh, as a family. Yeah, and how we uh, can enjoy it along the way as well, right? Because if we, I mean, there's such a, I know that in my experience, sometimes I feel like if my boundaries, if I have firm boundaries, then my kids aren't going to love me. Oh. My kids are not going to like me, mm. right? So, you know, I mean, I think there's a lot of fear there. And then if you have, no boundaries. If you're getting walked over, you're definitely not happy, <laughs> right. you know, type thing. So, yeah. I think the the question of boundaries comes up a lot with the moms that I work with, and this question of, you know, how do I set boundaries? What boundaries do I really believe in? What were the boundaries that I had as a child, or did I have boundaries? Were they very strict? Were they very permissive? Um, why do we need boundaries? And you know, again, that piece of, you know, what is my relationship with my children going to be like mm -hmm. um, when I look at these, this boundary issue. And sometimes people are saying, well, you know, why do we even need to discuss this? But what I've found over <laughs> decades with family is that children need boundaries. Um, children are continually coming up against all sorts of things, pushing their limits, and they have to come up against something just like, you know, gravity is a boundary. A tree limb is a boundary, um, you know, a, a hard floor is natural, a boundary, yeah. the natural boundaries, and they have to test that physically and then emotionally with guidelines. You know, we could say guidelines or boundaries, but this idea that if our children are going to push till they come up against something and if there's nothing there, then they will continue to push till they meet some societal boundary, especially as they head into the teen years and young adulthood. But there's a lot of different ways to look at how we define boundaries. Yeah, I go back to something that was taught to me from um, our parent co-op preschool. We had a guest speaker come on, and she 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 just hit it on the head so well. I'm going to share it with you because it's the same it's the same like strategy that I'm using with my teenagers. Mm -hmm. So this is working with a three year old, you know, two year old, three year old as all the way through. And that is you have the choice as a parent to, to think about this, to be a brick, a noodle or clay. Now, what type, what is your parenting style? Think about that for a second. How are you most like, are you most like the brick, like the, the clay or, or the noodle? And so you can think of the brick and you, you know, it's like if you, if you're a brick parent, what the, you know, the kid's going to come to you and ask something and, and it's going to know you, the firm boundaries. And how it's does that, clear. it's very <laughs> clear, right. But how does that feel? You know, think about it from, and empathetically, like think uh -huh. about it from your child's perspective. How would it feel to constantly come up to brick, to constantly not be able to, Ouch. exactly, not be able to have any, any say in anything. And we all know there's parents like that. I think growing up, we even, I mean, I, I remember you know, certain parents, friends, parents that were like that, where really? you knew you cannot get by with anything. Uh -huh. And sometimes those were the kids who, when once they got to high school, they, oh. were, they were the wild ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the second one I, I said was uh, the noodle. And you we all know those parents as well, um, that, oh, anything goes and, and you know, Run kind of those friends. Yeah, you know, being a friend rather than a parent and, and um, just, anything goes. And I think sometimes when that happens, it feels like a little bit of out of control, mm -hmm. both for the child as well as the parent. And I think when you see the wet noodle, that's oftentimes a parent who is maybe not necessarily giving um, himself or herself the, the self-care that, mm -hmm. that is needed. You know, it's just like, okay, no boundaries at all. Or exhausted. Exhausted. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
Um, and so the last one is, is the clay and that's what I aspire to be. And that's what I, I work with. And, and what the clay is, is imagine a piece of clay that it is, is pretty hard, mm -hmm. but yet it, it's malleable. It, it, you can, you can, you can shape and you can form and there, there's give and go. So if we look at our parenting like that, then it, it's more, um, it's, it's more vulnerable. We, we've been talking about vulnerability on the podcast. It, it's it's real. It's human. It's 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 recognizing and respecting your children as people, mm -hmm. you know, rather than below you, you know, and rather than you know um, a hierarchy. A hierarchy, exactly. Yeah. I love this image of clay because not only is it. It, it's giving, it's receiving, mm -hmm. it can be shaped, it can become what you as a mother with the, your children kind of want it to be. You can work on it together. I mean, there's so many wonderful analogies with the yeah, clay. And that's why it has evolved so greatly into teen years. Right. I mean, I really believe, um, and it was, it's like a positive discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like from that, that's what I grew, grew out of, like a positive discipline. And I believe um, attachment parenting, we've talked mm -hmm. about this, but it's really been like kind of that, that special, that secret sauce, I kind of call it into the teen years mm -hmm. where my children are like, they, they're, they're respected and, and their voice matters. Right. But you know, but yet it, it does, but they, have, also, they, have, they have to, to do it. chores. Right. They still yeah. have to do, but there you know. is that firmness to it. And mm -hmm. so I love this. I was talking yesterday about this idea of loving guidance. We can be yeah. firm with softness to it and I think that clay fits that analogy so we have to have some boundary and wherever you find your boundary then there can be a little bit of give to that a little bit of softness as to you know helping children understand the why you have that boundary and so we all have different values we all have different ways of looking at things and I've watched families have you know have choices around and you can take one just take bedtime for example and everybody is going to have a slightly different idea about exactly what time bedtime is for their children, exactly how they're going to do it, exactly what type of rhythm and routine is going to come into that. And um, that's another whole podcast that we're going to be talking about is rhythm and ritual and rites of passage. But just this idea of if the boundary that you come up with is, say, you know, 730 or 8 o'clock, and this is going to be, you know, a one-story bedtime, and you are crystal clear on that. And yet you're you're demonstrating that with love and with affection. You know the children will definitely get that. And so I was talking the other day about this concept of the areas where I was crystal clear on. Those were the ones that my kids just accepted. The ones where I was wavering, they also came in for. You know, so so yes, we have to have that clay, but we have to also think about it ahead of time. And then sometimes the children would come with really good reasons why they thought that should be challenged. And so we could talk about it a little bit and say, okay, well, I hear what you're saying. And this is my feeling. And this is my belief. And I hear what you're saying. And sometimes we can give a little bit. And sometimes it's like, no, this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. But I hear you and I honor you. And yet it is, you know, when I was growing up, it was just, it, that's the way it is because exactly. I said so. Right. And I never had a say in that. And it was just always a little frustrating. Like, well, wait a minute. That's not always going to be what's right in this situation. And so I became known as the great debater in our family, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you hone those skills as well. Yeah. I think I grew up with brick parenting, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just one way or, you know, one way and that, and that was just how it was done. And, and, uh, but it left me, um, you know, I kept a lot from them. I think mm -hmm. in my high school years, it's like I had my own life and which was great. And it, it's, it's different with my kids for sure. It's, it's definitely, um, it's a practice, like I've, like I've said, but it is much more, their voice matters. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that because, yeah, I had that similar, you know, I definitely knew what was right, what was wrong in our family, what we could do and what we couldn't do. But yes, that not being honored for my own voice. Mm -hmm. and, so and so we want that with our children. Yeah, and I wasn't heard. And that's stuff I've talked with in therapy, you know, mm -hmm. that I wasn't heard and everything. And, and it, you know, it can go both ways because I feel like sometimes my son or my daughter, like, I, I question sometimes, like, is that respectful? You know, I mean, my son has, has sworn it and not necessarily at me, but while talking to me in, in the heat of the matter, and it's kind of vulnerable saying that right now. And, but it's the reality of just like that, that 
I have given him that space. And as disappointed as I was in that behavior, I also understood it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a half hour later, we both like went to our corners. It was, it was a really <laughs> heated moment. And it was like, okay, what's this going to, how is this going to be? How's this going to end up? He came in, he apologized and we talked about it for a half hour. Oh. And so I'm like that there, that's the, the wisdom. Oh, that he's lovely. able to apologize. He recognized his behavior. And it was like, it was the day of, of bad news. And <laughs> it was, um, and it was, we were both tired. You know, you know, it's like there, there, you had that, um, that recipe for uh-huh. something. There was going to be an eruption. The eruption happened and I was surprised how it manifested exactly. But it was that, um, you know, that he was respected throughout the whole thing, um, you could differentiate the behavior from the emotion and also exactly. that you allowed him to have his emotions. And when we look at so many, especially young men right now, you know, they're being told that they can't ha- have their emotions. Yeah. And I think that, you know, both boys and girls should be honored. And I think, you know, we have these tender young boys and tender young girls, and we want to hear what they're saying. We want to honor their emotions. And yet we also don't want to to be walked all over. And yeah. so you can express your, it was hurt. I mean, yeah. I was hurt. I, it, I was pained and it was just like, but it was, um, it's not a pattern, right. you know, and, and that you we got through it. And, it and yeah, yeah. And, he, and he expressed it. And so, and then being able to debrief it and being able to really have a conversation about like, well, I felt this way. I felt this way. And I just felt like, dang, like I was very happy with our, with our, of moving through it, the process of it, and it's left behind, and we are stronger now. Right. Well, that's a perfect example of the clay. Where yeah. There was yeah. some modeling going on there. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, he like dug in a tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yet you were able to yeah. smooth it over. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think of so many instances with my own children where, you know, we would say or do things that, that hurt, or we would be able to, um, to have disagreements about the boundaries, and yet we always came back to that place of, you know, I hear what you're saying, um, even with, you know, our relationships, you know, we, we make mistakes, we say things that we don't mean. Uh, as the adults, our children saw that, and they saw us working through that, mm-hmm. the husband and wife, and the children doing things, and so really, it's such a, it's such a, an important topic of where do we clarify those boundaries Mm -hmm. and whether it's about values or whether it's about chores or whether it's about, you know, curfews or things that they can do as they get older. It's, it's a tricky one. And I remember growing up, you know, I wasn't allowed to do certain things that my brother had been allowed to do. And the, the answer was, well, he was a boy and it's like, well, that's not fair. And so, and, you know, but if my parents had been able to give me a little bit more, information I might have been able to accept that a little bit more graciously and so just I think of some of those struggles and you also mentioned that you know withholding things from them our children have always been very open with us and I think it is because we have had that give and take we have listened we have honored them but we've also held our own and so we've we've had to look at those boundaries but as teenagers they really were open to talking with us about just about everything and and so I appreciate that mm-hmm. relationship building that was done with this whole concept of boundaries. But I want to take it back also, unless there was there something else you wanted to add. No. Okay. okay. This idea of sometimes we give children way too many choices too. They have too many things. They have too right. many choices. They have too many activities. And so their little nervous systems are overwhelmed. And so we can look at that as part of the boundary piece that if, if we're, if we've got just too much stuff, then that's, like a loose boundary right there. And so we can simplify our lives and give our children less choices so they don't have to come up against so much. And And it's stressful. Yes. Yeah. And I think oftentimes I'm wanting to tell parents, you have to parent. You know, so many times people choose to, oh, I'm giving them choices or I'm giving, you know, it's like I'm I'm having, providing all that, I'm providing all the opportunity. However, they also need to step up and parent. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes they think parenting is going to, um, it's permissive parenting is really what, what it is. And that permissive parenting is a, um, it's a breakdown, I believe. You know, I, I, I think, and I, I think it comes from guilt. I see it a lot from um, working parents who want to give everything to their kids because there is guilt because they're not with them as much in time. And so they give, um, 
things, experiences, classes, but in reality, what do the children really need? They, they want time they with want their time families. And attention, yeah, you know? so time and attention, and then that space to have that creativity. And, and so space when to we do look, nothing. Yeah, space to do nothing, space to be bored, space to think. And we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. but this idea that when we simplify our lives and we have a rhythm to our lives, that that simplification and that rhythm takes the place of the discipline. We don't have yes. to be the bricks yeah. because we just have this flow in our family. And I'm not saying we did this perfectly. I can think no. of all kinds of moments where, where we didn't. But we always came back to the, what are my values around, whether it's bedtime, mealtime, if they could go somewhere or not, uh, whether they had to pick up things or, you know, just where is our boundary having that time to consciously think about that and then be able to implement that with our children. And when we simplify, when we have those patterns, those rhythms, then the children can live into that. They can relax into that. And we don't have as many of those uh, eruptions. boundary clashes. You know, yeah. yeah, like the eruption, when it happened, it, ha it hasn't happened. And so it was so, it was so in my face, you know, mm -hmm. and, it, and it hurt and it stung. And, um, but they don't happen, you know, and, and I think, you know, one thing that my son says is just like, we, uh, I'm so open with you. Like I, but my friends go, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much you tell your parents. And it's not, and, and we just listen really. And it's, we're, we're not asking, we're just listening and, and, um, communicating. And these are things that are on their minds. And so it feels, um, I feel like I'm supporting, mm -hmm. you know, being, being supportive, being that clay. And then when that boundary when I do need a boundary, um, such as curfew, for example, there's it's much easier to to discuss that. Like I'd like you home by this time because you know, and, and it's a discussion rather than top down. Right, and you're also giving him a reason. You're giving them reasons, and that's mm -hmm. the piece that I always felt was missing. Mm -hmm. And so you know, it's like, well, this is my decision, and this is why I'm making this decision. And you know, like you have to wear a helmet when you're riding your mm -hmm. bicycle mm -hmm. because I love you, because I want you protected, because the statistics are this. You know, and I don't need to go into huge detail with them, but to give them a little bit of reasoning as to why we're making that decision for them, why we're getting clear on that boundary for them. You know, bedtime because we love you, because mm -hmm. you need that sleep, because it's going to be healthy for your body, because you're going to have wonderful dreams. And so, you know, all right. these types of but things. But it's going to be really hard because um, I I know there's some teenagers who, when you say the bike helmet, they're not, they're going to just oh, going to say okay. no. And I mean, what do you do? What would you do, Maria? <laughs> oh gosh. Well, that one, you know, they can wear it out the driveway. Are they going yeah. to keep it on after they go? You know, I'll see kids with the bike helmet on the handlebars right, right, or right. the teenagers. And of course, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, what did we do as teenagers? Yeah. And so, you know, of course, when they're, away from us we have to hopefully have given them enough information that yeah. they make these healthy choices but it's going to be whether it's a bike helmet or whether it's drugs, drugs or alcohol, alcohol yeah. whether it's sex whether it's certain you know yeah. certain you hope that the tools that you have given them when they were younger are, are going to sh uh, are going to stay with them and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't and that's just part of their their failing and mm -hmm. you know and failing again and, and and learning from their experience it's like right they are resilient and Yes, we hope that they are resilient. Yeah, yeah you with know, those ones. I mean, yeah, and just, so, but I remember the first time my kids, you know, drove off in the car by themselves, yeah. and you just, at that point, you know that you've done the best you can, mm -hmm. and you've given them all of the tools, and you've listened, and you've supported, and you've molded together, and at a certain point, there's also that letting go, letting go. and so the boundaries. Oh, there's, there's beautiful writing about, you know, on childhood and then these pieces of, you know, when we have to let go and learning uh, Khalil Gibran writes beautifully about that on childhood and the letting go. But in those early years, we get that opportunity to be conscious about the choices that we make around our family values and the boundaries and the guidelines that we put into place. And it's also an area where, you know, I talk about the relationship of the, the village, the significant others, and if we can come together and... While we may not always be on the same page, hopefully we're being respectful of the the different opinions. And I, I think we've talked about this before, but in, in our household, you know, sometimes mom and dad had different opinions mm -hmm, about certain mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. And the children would, of course, see that. And so how we maneuvered through that relationship. And then you also talked about when this explosion happened in your household, you know, you both were coming from a place of maybe not fullness, you know, when we, yeah. when we have the mama care, when we've, when we've got our needs met, when 
the relationship is full, and then we have these things, you know, of course our children are going to have emotional outbursts. Of course they're going to have temper tantrums. Of course we are going to have them as adults as well. And then how do we maneuver through those? How do we move through? Uh Exactly. And come back together and grow. Yeah. And I just want to say another tool that you can use. um, We've talked about, I believe a little bit, the dinner table, Sunday night meetings, Mm -hmm. you know, so that you, that everybody's voice is heard and valued. That is just a tool for your toolkit that you can use. And you know, another another tool is um, nonviolent communication. Mm-hmm. Learning how to discuss things with your partners, with your children, using nonviolent communication is um, is a great resource. Yes, it is. So you've talked about attachment parenting, positive discipline, mm-hmm. nonviolent communication. Um, one other little thing that we did when the kids were teenagers was we had a family journal. Oh, and nice. anyone could write anything they wanted in that family journal, although they weren't allowed to swear in it. And that was a boundary that I had. But but they could express their emotions. They could say how they were feeling. And they could write it in there. And nobody was allowed to, to judge, to judge mm-hmm. or censor or anything. And so that I found that the other day. And it was oh. just interesting to look at, you know, just that family journal piece that um, sometimes when we have those emotions, writing is a it's a constructive place to deal with it. And of course we encourage our children to have yeah. their, their journals and, you know, they can have in the younger years, that big life journal that helps mm-hmm. to foster that You're right, growth, growth mindset. Right. But then as they get older, they can have their own really reflective journals where they can process this. And of course, giving them access to, you know, to poetry and, and that's what I had, workshops. you know, with my brick, my, my brick parents, um, I, I had a journal mm-hmm. and I journaled all through high school and college. And, stuff, oh, and that was really, you. Yeah, but that was that was something that I used. All right. So so this is just it's such a um, an important discussion, and like I said, you know, everybody is going to have slightly different boundaries, but taking that time to really think about the intention that you want for your families and how you create those, and um, talking about them, talking about them. Yep. Exactly. So, and I love that uh, that picture that you gave us what? about the brick, the clay. The oh, right, 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 right. I don't know. Keep going about. back to that right. because that's just, yeah, that, that really works. Yeah. <laughs> so enjoy working with your clay this week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so have a great day. We'll and see you next time on The, the Moms, Moms I, I Know. know. Thanks for joining us today for The Moms I Know. To learn more about Sheila and her online program, The Mom Map, visit purplebeatnutrition.com. For Maria's monthly blog and to learn more about her group programs and retreats, visit SoquelEssentials.com. That's S-O-Q-U-E-L Essentials.com. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Moms I Know. Until next week, have a joyful family journey.